Hey everybody, it's Matthew from marketingandreallife.com and this is the next video in the Google Analytics tutorial series. And just a reminder, this is not going to be about the basic tutorial such as how to use every little part of Google Analytics because Google already does a good job of showing you that in their help menu at the top right here. You just click on help and you can learn all about it, which you should do. You should go through that and you should become very familiar with using this so you can be very comfortable with using analytics. But remember, this series is more about how to read it properly to make yeah, excuse me, to make correct decisions on how you are going to be running your business. Because I can tell you time and time again I've made critical errors based off of reading my data incorrectly. So I want to go over a few sections of Google Analytics just to give you an overview of how to use them properly and how to read them properly so that you can better understand your visitors. In another video we're going to talk about the segments just like I showed in the introduction. I don't want to go over that right now because it is a little advanced so I want to save it maybe for last so you can see exactly how you can make segments properly. So this is the dashboard that we're at right now. Uh, let's just click on a few of these links over here on the left hand side. For example if we click on visitors We'll be able to get more detailed information about our visitors. So here's a, a bunch of information and a lot of it can be very useful for your site design and also just for determining the general health of your site. Uh, for example you see that we had 188,000 visits which sounds great and Google tells me that they're absolutely sure that at least 74,000 of those are unique visitors because that's where it says absolute unique visitors. And so they're that number is obviously still not going to be 100% because not everybody is trackable. That's something that you should understand as well. There's about 30% of the people out there who are not trackable due to some sort of antivirus software that actually blocks tracking, which is ridiculous in my opinion, uh, or just because something goes wrong and uh, they don't get tracked properly. So your analytics are never going to be perfect. They're always going to be more statistical sampling of what you have. Now mind you, a very, very good sampling because it'll get about 70% of your traffic in here. As we saw before, 1.3 million page views, 6.79 average page views, all that kind of stuff doesn't really matter that much. You just want to make sure that people are, in the end, completing their goals and, um, and making purchases and all that. And we'll talk about goals probably in another video as well. But here's some interesting things you can get in the Visitors tab that you can use for your site design. Over here you see all these other menus under Visitors. One thing I like to look at is browser capabilities and then go to screen resolutions because this tells you basically in your market and they're going to be similar. You're probably going to find that it's going to be very similar in most markets but you never know. There might be some weird uh, thing that you get in your market that you want to be aware of so you don't want to just follow what everybody says about the size of your website based on what they've done. You want to take a look at your analytics and see what your customers really are using. And here's the great thing, it'll actually tell you the screen resolutions of your visitors. And so you can use this in your site design to make sure that your site is wide enough. And they might think, well, you want to make it narrow enough, but in reality, the whole only having your site being 600 pixels wide is a thing of the past. Right now I have this viewing screen set to 1280 by 720 which is very close to this 1280 by 800. But in reality, my screen is actually much, much bigger. In my case, it's a, I think it's a 1920 by 1080. And I apologize again for the background noise because there is construction going on right outside. So mine is more like down here, the 1920 by 1080. So that's what I'm looking at. So if you have a narrow website, something that's only 600 pixels wide, it's only going to be like this wide on this screen. And most people have widescreen monitors now. That's becoming a very normal thing. So the narrow websites are a thing of the past. You most likely want to make your website a thousand pixels wide so you're using more of the screen real estate that people are working with. And obviously you're not going to want to design it for 1900 wide because most people are still below that. So you still need to be careful with that kind of design. We look at it here, it's 1280 wide, 10, uh, over 1000 wide, over 1000 wide, over 1000 wide, over 1000, over 1000, over 1000, over 1000, over 1000. And that gets us down to number 9. If we show maybe 25 rows, and then we have this one 320 by 396, it's most likely like a mobile device or something like that. And then we get back 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 320,000. So everybody who's really looking at this, you only have a small percentage, 0.45 plus 0.34%. That's less than 
who have less than a thousand wide. So if you're still designing your websites to be 600 wide, then you're not really catering to your customers anymore. Now, of course, if you look at this and you see that everybody's still at 800 by 600, maybe you're dealing with a, a really, really older market, and so they all still have tiny monitors and everything blown up really big so they can see it properly, then in your case, you'd want to see this. You'd see that anomaly and realize that you need to design your site accordingly. And this is where it really depends on your visitors. It doesn't matter what I'm getting. It matters what you're getting to your site. But most likely, you're going to find it very similar to this. And you're also able to look at things like flash versions, browsers, and operating systems. So maybe you're, if you click on operating systems, you find out that your market, like obviously most people, it's going to be Windows is really high, but maybe in your market, Mac users turn out to be 80% because maybe there's maybe you're doing some sort of graphics development or video development you find that everybody has Macs. Well, if that's the case, you want to make sure that the things that you're doing are Mac compatible, in which case most website stuff are because it's just the same across browsers. But you never know if you're giving out software, this will give you a better idea of whether you should make a Mac version or not. And obviously in this case, 86% are using Windows and then 9% are using Mac, although there is the iPhones, the iPods, and Linux, and iPads, and all that, but there's still very, very little that are using all these others. So right now I just have to worry about Windows mostly, and maybe Mac a bit. A lot of these other things are kind of fun to look at. Uh, they're not necessarily that important. Map overlay is a very important one, though, so that you can know where your visitors are coming from. And the nice thing about all these, while we're waiting for that to load, I did click on it, did I not? Yes, there we go is if you have your goals set up, meaning that you actually tell Google Analytics where your thank you pages are for newsletter signups, or if you have an e-commerce site, it's very important to get your e-commerce goals set up properly, where your uh, shopping cart software actually posts to Google Analytics sales so that they can track it. Um, and if, once again, you have problems with that, just give me an email, consulting at marketingandreallife.com, and I can give you a hand with that. Uh, then the nice thing is you can look at all these stats and at any point you see these four tabs. So I have goal set up and goal set up and e-commerce. I can click on the e-commerce tab and it will immediately tell me the revenue associated with each of whatever I'm looking at. So if we go back, let's just go back to, not that this is going to matter so much, but let's look at screen resolutions. Let's see if there's some sort of trend. If I click on e-commerce, and you can even track AdSense revenue if you have it on your site. And the revenue showing percentage. I want to change that over here to transactions, so we see dollars. Oh, it's still showing that. Oh, wait, here we are. Transactions. So you can see the number of transactions based on their screen resolution, and it really is not showing any trend. It's just going down to the same percentage as this, so it's not really showing that big a difference. We look at the revenue, and you know these this guy it seems that this monitor size makes me the most money so should I cater to that size obviously it's not going to be that important but map overlay and looking at e-commerce map overlay shows you a pretty map and which is you know it's nice to look at it gives you a quick visual idea of where most of your visitors are coming from of course I'm in Canada so I get a lot of Canadian and American visitors and then we have this United Kingdom is a big one right here it's because in my niche it's very, very popular in the UK as well. And then we have Australia being a little bigger as well, and then lots of smaller countries. Scroll down, you can see all of those right here. So then you can click on e-commerce again. If you have this set up properly, you'll see where the revenue is coming from. And obviously most of them are from Canada, and then the second most is from the United States. And then you're not going to see hardly any from anywhere else, because we do actually have a UK branch set up that's not in here. Let's see what else we got here. That's the Visitors tab. So let's see if there's anything else important, and then I'm going to make another video showing you how to look at things such as traffic sources. Okay, so let's move on, and in the next video I'm going to show you traffic sources and how you can use that to give you more information.